Welcome to the Voice Coach Podcast, here for all your speaking voice training and guidance. My name is Nick Redman, and I am offering you all sorts of nuggets of wisdom on how to keep your voice in good working order and a true representation of who you are. So if you're a podcaster, presenter, actor, speaker, or a voiceover artist, or a general voice geek, you're in good hands. Shall we get started? Hello there, dear listener. Now, this episode comes with a disclaimer, and that is that this exercise is wonderfully ridiculous. (laughs) I don't feel like I need to tell you that anymore, but just in case you're new, (laughs) there might be a point where you're like, what in the name of God am I doing with my time? But, you know, I feel like at this stage in the podcast, you've very much expanded your comfort zone and are willing to trust me. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Also, you'll need some words that are literally written on a page to read from, so some writing. It could be something that you're preparing to present or record right now, or it could be whatever's to hand, like poetry is good for this too. So if you have a book of that, or, you know, just Google dead nice poems (laughs) and then save one of those. But you will need some literal writing. So this is a great exercise to use if you feel like you're not connecting with the words which might seem like a bit of an abstract concept, to be honest, but I'll explain a wee bit more. It might be some words that you say all the time and they're boring now (laughs) and you feel like you need to bring some new life to them and revisit them in a different way. Uh, Maybe they're words you've not written, like an audio book you've got to record that's maybe awful or something that you're not hugely interested in or perhaps agree with, and you need to find a way of connecting to those words to really find that authenticity for communication. Or maybe you've been given feedback that your voice is monotone, which sort of isn't possible, by the way. So if someone does give you that feedback, send them to me. (laughs) But anyway, this is a super way of finding expression and colour for presenting as well and talking. So if you have any weird feedback about your voice being boring or, you know, not interesting or whatever, then this is another really nice one to give you something tangible to play with. So what we're basically going to do is explore the vowels and the consonants separately as sounds, then piece them all back together. This week, I think we'll only do the vowels and next week we'll do the consonants just so your brain doesn't (laughs) explode. And I'd love to know what you think about this exercise, actually, because I've done it loads in person with people in the room and there's always really interesting results and chat about it. So if you do want to let me know how you get on or you've got any questions, because it might be a wee bit abstract and very new to you, then just find me on Instagram I am at Nick Red Voice and just just slide your way into my DMs, love them. I can have a wee natter about it. Now, again, I can't really remember the first person who I did this exercise with, but versions of it can definitely be found in Finding Your Voice and Tackling Text by Barbara Houseman. And also there's a version in the Verbal Arts Workbook by David and Rebecca Carey. And there's also sort of a tiny mini version we're going to start with from Voice Work, Art and Science in Changing Voices by Christina Shewell. So there's three books you can look for and I'll stick links in the show notes that will give you another way of exploring this exercise. So we're going to start by working with the vowel sounds within words. Now note that I said vowel sounds and not vowel letters. Remember in the last episode, I explained how there are five written vowel letters in the English alphabet, but there are many, 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 many spoken vowel combinations of those letters. Well, this exercise is about the vowel sounds, not the letters themselves. So just note that as we're going through and it it should become apparent as I explain it. So we're going to spend a little time with the vowels. We're going to hear them, feel them, say them. We're going to isolate just the vowel sounds in single words to start with. Let's start with a really simple word like feet, as in the distance or the things on the end of your legs, probably. (laughs) So feet. Just say that word a few times and think about it. Feet. 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 Great, we all know the word feet. <laughs> now the vowel sound in there is two written E's, which makes a very simple vowel sound, E, quite a long E. So we would just spend a little time with that sound. E, E. How does it feel? Is it long? Is it short? E, do you like it? Don't you like it? 
E. Does it remind you of anything? Up here in the northeast where I live, it's that E pet <laughs> kind of sound I've just realised. But you know, if you do or don't like it, what might that be? Does it bring any emotions up for you? E. 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 All right. What about the word mouth? Once again, just start by saying the word mouth. 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 I've got a mouth. My mouth is open. We all know what mouth means. <laughs> now, the letters of writing the vowel in that sound are O, U. In my accent, those letters in that word context equate to the sound I, as in mouth. I. Now, in your accent, it might be different unless you happen to be from. Northern Ireland, with all the accent influence that I have. And if you have, let's have a drink. <laughs> but think about that vowel sound for you. Ow. Might be ow. Might be ow. Might be ow. Might be ow. Mouth. Ow. Ow. And this is the point where the letters versus the vowel sound actually come apart. So I'm not going O U. O U. I'm working with the sound that those letters represent. I. I. And if you find that hard to isolate, then go to the whole word again, mouth, and say it really slowly and then just gently drop the consonants out, sort of like someone's turning the volume down when you're speaking on the m and the th sound. So you'd go mouth, mouth, I, mouth, mouth, I. Okay, so we've done E as in feet. We've done I as in mouth. What does I feel like to you as a vowel? Is it one you like? Does it feel slightly different to the E one? It's actually sort of a moving vowel. So you sort of get two sounds in there. What about a multisyllabic word like, well, okay, well, syllabic. <laughs> That's lots of syllables in there. Syllabic. Let's say it again a few times. Syllabic. Syllabic. This is a multi-syllabic word. Oh, look how syllabic this word is. I don't think that's even a real sentence, but we've said the word again to get used to it. Syllabic. There are a few vowels in there and a cheeky one that is actually called a semi-vowel, which sort of might confuse because it's written like a Y letter, but the sound is actually a sound in this context. So say it nice and slowly to start with so we can find those vowels. Sela. Bic. Syllabic. So we've got a vowel sound on the Y letter. That's that semi vowel. And in the spoken sense, it's closer to a vowel and a consonant. It certainly sounds like an open and unobstructed sound. So we get for that letter, we get E. Then we get an A, as in Silla. A. And then we get an E, as in Bic. E. So we get an E, A, E. Again, I'm not saying the letters that are written there. I'm not saying the vowel letters. So I'm not going Y, A, I and sounding out the vowels. I'm doing the sounds that those letters represent. E, A, E. And again, if you find that tough, then write them out separately. Maybe underline the letters that we're trying to sound out. Even write phonetically underneath what those letters represent sound-wise for you. And try the whole thing with the consonants back in, but just slowly drop the consonants out. Syllabic. E-la-bic. e a e And then try and get them to feel quite smooth. So we're not going e a e with that harsh, glottal, kind of punchy onset. We're sort of smoothing them in quite legato. e a e e a e e a e Okay, so we've done those three words. We've done... E, as in feet, I, as in mouth, and EI, as in syllabic. Now we're going to piece the words back together. So you're going to stick the consonants back in. Feet, feet, mouth, mouth, syllabic, syllabic. How does the word feel or sound for you now? Do you feel like there's maybe a little bit more in there, like you might understand it a bit more or it might feel like a bit more than just one random word? Does the vowel seem slightly more important in the word context now? Maybe you'd never really thought about the E in fate. 
or the eye and mouth, or the e a e in syllabic. Maybe the sounds just taste a bit nicer, if that, if that means anything to you. Maybe it just feels nice to say those vowels and to give some space to those vowels. Anyway, just reflect on how that feels. Next, what we're going to do is take a longer set of words, what some might call a sentence. So take a moment to grab something to read. I shall pause. Great, welcome back. Uh, and we will work through one line of whatever you have there. Could be anything, could just be the paper, could be somebody's caption on an Instagram thread you've seen recently or somebody's Facebook profile or whatever. Just quickly Google sonnets or poems. But we're going to work through one line of it, a nice short one, don't go mad, uh, with vowels only. So let me demonstrate. I'll use a line of a sonnet because it's in my head. (laughs) You probably know it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So we've got shall, a, I, well, that's an I, compare, a, a, the, which is our E again, to, u, a, you guessed it, a, <laughs> summers, a, a, de, a. So just the vowels there is, from shall I compare thee to a summer's day is, a, i, a, a, e, Ua, uh, a. And this is the moment where you go, pardon me? <laughs> I'll do it again. And keeping it nice and sort of gentle and legato and smooth. I, o, a, e, ua, uh, a. I, o, a, e, ua, uh, a. Now, what exploring that on its own gives me as a speaker is a real feel for the flow of the emotion in the line. Like what Barbara said about the vowels being the river of feelings through the words. I feel like I can feel what the writer's trying to say with some of those words, the emotion they're trying to get to. I can feel where some of the vowels are longer and shorter, like I is longer and that feels indulgent and lovely, as is the E on the. So there's almost a connection through that antithesis or opposing concepts of that I and the, which is really what this whole sonnet's about, you know, I, the speaker, and the, the love. I, the. And they're both long, juicy kind of, let's say sexy kind of vowels in that context. I, the. And then we get a, uh, uh. In a summer, a uh uh, a uh uh, a uh uh, which is like a run of shorter vowels, which feels quite bouncy and exciting, like as if I'm just dying to let you know what I'm comparing this the to. A uh uh. So we can use the vowels to give us a connection to those words. We've got the I and the E, and we've got the bouncy a uh uh in that shorter a summer's bit which brings that excitement and that bounce after the lovely, long, languishing, kind of gorgeous, longer vowels in the other words. So I feel like I've got a connection to some of the sounds within the separate words rather than just the words themselves, which feels really tangible. And with complex words and phrases and text, especially like good old Shakespeare, it's really useful. But also if you're someone who records podcasts, for example, you can just use this to give emphasis and expression to the passion that you have for what you're saying. I know some people get really caught up in thinking that they sound a bit monotone or they listen back to their podcast and they go, God, I don't sound as excited in my voice as I felt when I was recording this at the time. And I thought it was being really expressive. But you can use this kind of an exercise to help you out on that. Go back to your text, look at the vowels. And if you're trying to say, you know, if your podcast is about cooking and you really want to let your listener understand how unctuous and oozy and gooey the cake's going to be, instead of just saying it should turn out really oozy and gooey, you can use the vowels oo and oo in oozy and gooey for some like really expressive oomph, you know. This cake should turn out really oozy and gooey because you get that lovely repetition of the oo and the oo. Or like if you're in the corporate world and you need to really hammer home during a presentation or something, the importance of the rise in company costs that you've seen in the accounting department you work in, she says, creating a 
corporate type environment, we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure this quarter, then you can lean into that repetitive E sound you get in there. You know, the we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. Now, I'm not saying you're going, we've seen a 50% increase, like some weird ghost. (laughs) Although that would make the quarterly sales chat much more interesting. It's just about feeling and using the sounds that you're given in the words that you write. We've seen a 50% increase in expenditure rather than we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. And it, it can take a bit of getting used to. But that's usually because maybe you're not used to using your voice in this way, but it's a much more authentic and tangible way of bringing vocal range to your speech and variety because the vowels mean something. They're the emotion. That's what we talked about last week. And it's a lot easier to feel real and honest doing it this way rather than just someone says, please emphasise the word 50 and increase because they're the important bits in this information. You'll sound much less robotic. You know, we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. Boring. We've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. So much more interesting and more connected to your message. I promise. And it's all about balance. And we will explore how we can do a similar thing with the consonants in the next episode to sort of even out that feeling of really riding the vowels. Oh... Oh, I love talking about this stuff. I'd love to know what you think about it. So do slide into my DMs, like I said, at Nick Red Voice and let me know. Now remember, I'm taking calls for the next Ultimate Voice Getaway Retreat now. So if you'd like to spend a weekend with me in the countryside in the UK, exploring the potential of your voice with a bunch of like-minded people, lots of work like this with sound and emotional connection and like releasing tension and breath, it's going to be bloody gorgeous, then head to the link in the show notes, set up a wee chat. We just did one at the weekend. I had my third Ultimate Voice Getaway Retreat and I had seven people with me at my house in the country and it was just wonderful. In fact, here are a few words that people have spoken about the retreat. The setting is just incredible. So alongside the kind of professional development, which is second to none in Nick's approach because of how she brings humour into her knowledge. The fact that you can go on a walk and climb up and see the wall and just have that fix from the natural world as well as what you're learning professionally. It's a brilliant experience. Everyone's here with a common goal almost. I think everyone's here from different industries almost, and but we all use our voice and we're all here to look after it. And that's it. It's a very simple thing. And there's a lovely camaraderie and there's a, there's a real sense of warmth and, and connection. And that, I think, has been lovelier than, than anything else. I would recommend that anyone who uses their voice in a professional capacity come away and do this retreat. Nick is fantastic. She's inspiring. She's kind. She's generous and supportive and has created an environment where you can learn so much, build a community with other people and really connect to the fundamentals of what you're doing and just have a really great time doing it. And I think we don't always spend the time that we need to really looking after ourselves and supporting who we are and what we do and I think this is just a great opportunity to do that for ourselves so please do because it's been brilliant isn't that great that could be you (laughs) right that's it from me see you next time or should I say Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. For even more support with your speaking voice, head on over to our free community, The Voice and Accent Hub on Facebook. See you in there.